Welcome to The Long and Short of It, the podcast where two friends share stories that strengthen and truths that transform. These two are guaranteed to give you a good laugh and are also known to shed a few tears. Whether you're a longtime believer or just curious about God and Christianity, our goal is to encourage, empower, and equip women in the intersection of faith and everyday life. So grab a cup of coffee, put on your favorite fuzzy socks, and give a warm welcome to your hosts, Andrea Waitley and Terry Meyer. Terry, I don't know about you, but we have been thinking about and praying about and planning this day for over a year, and here we are, and what better day than to do it than on my birthday. Thank you so much. But, oh, gosh, we're so hopeful that people are joining us and that they will be blessed by the things that we just want to share that are on our hearts. Uh, But before we do that, Terry, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about us, how we came to be the long and short of it? Well, I have to tell you that it was 20 years ago that Andrea and I met, and we met in a very strange way. God has a funny sense of humor, I would say for sure. Um, I was part of a prayer group down at the church, and Andrea was invited to join us. And as we were praying with our eyes closed in serious prayer, I had been involved with weight training. Why am I tempted? However, as we were praying for weight training afterwards, Andrea came up to me and said that she would like to be a participate with me in this weight training. She meant this kind of. Well, you look like training. a physical trainer. And so I thought, oh my gosh, a physical trainer or a fitness trainer that's a believer. I'll just hook up with her. Yes. Yeah. However, she was a newlywed. And I don't think that her husband would be interested in her participating in our <laughs> abstinence only program. And so we immediately connected and bonded instantly. When we discovered my weight training was a little different than her weight training, mine was spelled W A I T. Hers was spelled W-E-I-G-H, That's exactly. although I needed that for sure. <laughs> I thought you looked great, and I can remember that I just immediately uh, just fell in love and was drawn to your personality, to uh, the fact that you were tall and could reach things for me, and also, but more, more than anything, Terry, uh, I just saw in you this deep, deep love for Jesus, and uh I think we just recognize each other. I think that's what happens with people who really love the Lord. We instantly know that about each other. And I just instantly knew that about you. And there was something in your personality that let me know that you were a kindred spirit, that you wanted to do whatever the Lord called you to do uh, to make him known. And so that's why we came up with, down the road, came up with our a uh, motto of stories that strengthen and truth that transform because through these 20 years we've traveled a lot of miles together and had so much fun together and yet we've seen the Lord do deep and marvelous and wonderful things. Uh tell us a little bit how you came to know the Lord, Terry. You know what? It was interesting. I was a military brat and we moved around all of our life and um And so it was later in life. In fact, I feel like I wandered through the wilderness for 40 years. I was familiar with religion, but not a personal relationship with Jesus. And then um, our extended family had some challenges, and I had begun my very first Bible study. God had orchestrated those details and worked out those plans. And um, it was then that I began seeking and searching and wanting to know more. And it was just like he lifted his word off of the page and it became real and true and transparent to me. Your story's a little different than mine. Why don't you share a little bit about your story? Well, uh, I had the blessing, literally, of being raised uh, in a Christian home or by a Christian mom and a great-grandmother who loved Jesus. And that great-grandmother uh, taught me to memorize scripture. She would read Bible stories to me, and then she would help me learn to memorize God's word. And I had no idea at the time that what she was doing was training me for exactly for what the Lord has me doing now, and that's to share his word with hungry, hungry women everywhere. And uh, but she uh, we began with Matthew five sixteen. Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. 
And I've always wanted to live in the truth of that. What does it mean to live in such a way that people know God and then they're drawn to him and they want to give him glory? And so uh, at 15, I came into a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus, but it was several years before I understood the Lordship of Jesus. And you sometimes hear people say, well, I made Jesus Lord. No, I didn't make him Lord. He was already Lord. Uh, What I did was I submitted to his lordship, and life has never been the same since. Uh, I've experienced a lot of different things, a lot of different hard places, and I often say life may be very hard, but God is very good. And through those experiences, the Lord birthed the ministry, Cross My Heart Ministries, of which you've been a part, you're on the board, and you've been a part these 20 years. And Like I said, we've gotten to go to some amazing places and minister to some precious, precious women. And I know you jokingly say, if I ever say the words, have I got a deal for you, run. But tell them them why you felt that way. You know what? I love that. That was several years ago when you sent an email and said, have I got a deal for you? And I unfortunately opened that email. And you had invited me to step outside of my comfort zone and to take, um, I feel like, a leap of faith and then invited me to participate in women's ministry and to be a speaker um, at the First Baptist Church Women's Conference up in Estes Park. I will never forget that. And I have never um, depended upon the Lord and trusted in the Lord greater in that time and season. I felt ill-equipped. I felt unqualified, as I do today, sitting here with you today. Um, I just, I love the Lord, and I love to talk about the Lord, and I love to share the Lord, but I must say I felt like I had been stretched outside of my comfort zone, and yet that was the beginning of something life-changing and transforming, and um, it's been a privilege and an honor to be in this ministry and to be a part of this with you. Um, I must say there are ups and downs, and as we often joke about, that you are a microwave, I am a crock pad. <laughs> it's right. a really long time to come up with messages to share. You, on the other hand, whip them out in no time. <laughs> and I wish I had it up, but together I think we're a good team, we're a good pair, um, and we complement each other in that season. And so I appreciate, I was humbled and honored that you would have asked me Um, And I just um, appreciate you being willing to take a chance and take a step out uh, with me. Well, I want you to know I've never regretted it. And what I love is your passion, especially for young mommies, uh, young women with children, young women who are entering marriage. You have such a gift for being able to encourage them to stay the course, uh, to hold on to the hope that they have in Jesus Christ, that their marriage can become what God wants it to be that they can raise their children in a way that pleases him. And it fits so much with my desire to equip women of all ages. And and really, we want this podcast to be for everyone, whatever season you're in. We want to be here to encourage you in that season, whatever is going on in your life. For me personally, Terry, right now, I'm in a season of learning what it looks like to live alone. Uh, As many people know, my husband, Frank, went to be with Jesus August 25th of 2023, and you had such an impact on his life and shared so many uh, scriptures with him that he held on to, and I just want to thank you for that. Helen, he had such an impact (laughs) on my life and on the lives of so many, and it was such a privilege and an honor. I just consider him Um, He just spoke life and truth. And the fun thing is, again, our connections are so great because God saw fit that Frank would have been my husband's youth pastor. Exactly. Exactly. God, the creator of the universe, the maker of all things, saw way more than we did and knew he would knit our lives together. Exactly. He's always knitting things together for his purposes and for his glory. And, And I just remember how much Uh, Frank hung on to that word from Psalm 71 that you gave him. Uh, But what I was saying about this season is learning to live alone, because even though I've been widowed before at that time when my husband Larry passed away, 
Abby was eight years old, so she was still home. So I wasn't really alone. I had her with me. Uh, but this time is different. And I was thinking the other day, if I combine all my marriages, <laughs> I've been married 50 years. And I've never <laughs> that's and I've never been alone. I have never lived on my own. And what I'm discovering, something that the Lord showed me is that in this season, what he's done is he's told me, I want you all to myself. And that has, oh, I know it. And it's totally changed the way I see being alone because I'm not alone. And every time uh, if I start to feel lonely or uh, afraid or whatever, all of a sudden I just hear his voice saying, but remember, I have you all to myself. And I cannot tell you what a uh, how much that has just blessed me and it's comforted me and it's brought me peace and it's brought me joy. And, and so I feel like that between the two of us, that's why we call it one of the reasons, the long and short of it is that you're six, nearly six feet tall, and, and I'm not. I am all of five feet, and that's just pushing it. You're one of them more. <laughs> that's right. That actually <laughs> that's tall. right. Yeah. We could do thing one thing. Yes, we could. Yeah. So so you see your the cat in the hat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the thing is, the long and short of it is that Jesus is who he says he is. He'll do what he says he'll do. And he wants us with him. He wants us to experience his presence, whatever situation, whatever place we're in, he wants us with him. Absolutely. Whether the season is the season of being alone or a season of a lot, he wants us with us yeah. in every season of our life. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, he really does. Yeah. And that's what I want women to know more than anything. You are never on the shelf. Your life is never put on hold. Uh, so many times women are in a hard place and they feel like their life has been put on hold. And I want to encourage saying, no, your life's not on hold. This is your life right now. This is your portion right now. This is the place that the Lord has for you right now. Uh, I had a prayer uh, request this morning, a person said, I know these are first world problems and I feel guilty about asking for prayer for them. And I, I just told her, I said, if the Lord had wanted you to have third world problems, you would be, had been born into a third world country, but you weren't, you were born here and where we deal with different kinds of problems. And I told her, I said, needed grace is needed grace. No matter where we are, we're always in need of grace. And that's part of the truth that transforms is when we realize that our need for grace will never be taken away. God will never take that from us because he always wants us in that place of total dependence on him, of totally wanting to receive from him. I like you always say posture yourself. What does that mean when you say that? Oh, I just, I visualize, I'm such a visual person and I see posture as literally receiving what he has for us. And I feel like if we haven't postured to receive, we can't pour out to others. And so I think it's so important that we posture ourselves in a position to partner with God, to come alongside him. And in fact, last year, um, New Year's, that was my word, to posture myself to receive all that God has for me. So then I can pour out on others. And so I think we posture ourselves to receive the grace he has for us today in this place. That's exactly right. It. That's exactly yeah. right. Don't miss the grace for the place because there is grace for the place. And, and I think about what you said about posture to receive. It also is true that we cannot give what we haven't received. Uh, this helps me be patient with people when I see them withholding uh, things that people need, maybe grace or love or kindness or forgiveness or whatever. And I'm reminded that they must not have received that from the Lord yet, or they would give it. And, and so that helps me know what to pray for people when I see that they're not walking in all that God has for them. Then my prayer becomes for them that they'll come to that place of receiving from him what they need so that they can give it to others. In fact, John the Baptist said that. He said, no one can 
uh, receive anything unless he gets it from heaven, unless heaven reveals it to him. And, and so when I see a lack in someone, I just say, Lord, would you reveal to them what they need? Would you give that to them so that they can start living in that and start giving it out? And I, I think that's such a good reminder to us as well when we feel like we can't offer to someone, whether it be patience or kindness or forgiveness, that that is exactly what we need. We just received, first of all, we do need to put a little promo in here that we have two producers who are assisting us because yes, we are not you. qualified in this step at all. Lady <laughs> and Lindsay, who have come to assist us and are using big words like QuickTime Zoom, uh, ring like it's all a foreign language to us. Yes. Two of us can chat very well, but we are very, very thankful for young energy, enthusiasm, excitement that comes alongside of us. More seasoned, mature, maybe wise. Yes. Needy, needy women. We're needy and we need them and we're so thankful for them. And, and that's something else. This is something we thought of a year ago. And Lens was excited about it. And she said, well, I've got some tools to help y'all, but I, I don't know everything. And then uh, at the same time, Haley and her husband moved here as our uh, new associate pastor and his wife at Emmanuel Baptist. And Haley and I just clicked and she's got gifts and she and Lens have such beautiful gifts and they work so well together and they make us look good. <laughs> I think that we, we're not so well corrected next time. But I'm just reminded of the scripture from Titus that just says, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanders or addicted to too much wine, but to teach what is good. And it goes on to say to train the younger women. And you're like, just love the visual of this being multi-generational. I do. This is not, we cannot stand alone. We must come together and we are That's better right. together. That's right. We are better. And it's a, our faith is a generational faith. Uh, you go through the Old Testament and it was Abraham and then Isaac and Jacob and, and then Jacob's sons. And it's a generational faith. God, when he makes a promise, he always makes it to the next generation. He promises it to us, and then he says, this is for you and your children and your children's children. And, and so we want to really help women not only just live their own lives, but also to invest in the legacy of what the Lord has given them to invest in their next generation. I heard someone say uh, once that we are building more than we can see, a and we really are. We are building more than we can see. And so we're looking forward to spending time with you. We look forward to your questions. I think we have a link where you can uh, make comments or uh, ask questions but uh, or send us emails. Yes. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your comments on Facebook. But this has been such a special time. And I want to end with a scripture. Yes, especially on my birthday. And I love it that the Lord uh, wants us to come out of our comfort zones. And I love this verse from Psalm 96, and it's really verse 3, and it says, Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he has done. And whoever's listening, we want you to know that's what our focus will be. It's not going to be a focus on Terry. It's not going to be a focus on me. It's going to be a focus on the amazing things that God has done and is wanting to do in your life. Terry, would you close us in prayer? Oh, I would love to. Gracious and heavenly Father, this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we just give you praise. We celebrate our sweet, sweet, precious friend, Andrea, today on the day of her birth. And we just thank you, Father God. She is just a gift and a blessing to so many of us, and we rejoice in that. She leaves a little sparkle and glitter everywhere she goes, and we just thank you for her. And we thank you for this time together. We thank you for those of you who are listening. And Father God, we just ask that you be with us. Give us eyes to see what you have in store for us, ears to hear. Penetrate and pierce our hearts in ways like never before. It is in the strong and the mighty and the precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope and pray that you feel equipped and encouraged. 
Until next time, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. From all of us here at Cross My Heart, have a very blessed day. Thank you.